Hi, this is Kenny Lee, and let's go into some Newton's first law demonstrations. Now, Newton's first law is basically an object will move at a constant velocity or remain sitting still until an outside unbalanced force acts upon it. So for a lot of these demonstrations, we have something sitting still that we want to keep sitting still. So we're going to start off with this. There's a little plastic flask, and I've got this hoop that we're going to put on top and a penny at the very top. And the objective is to remove the hoop so that the penny falls only under the influence of gravity into the flask. So the question is, how do we do that? So think about it for a second, and I'm going to try it here. Okay, so how would we do that? Well, the penny has inertia. It wants to keep sitting still. So as long as we don't give it a reason to move any direction, it will stay right there. But when we remove the hoop out of the way, there is a force on it that's going to cause it to move, and that's its weight. And that's going to make it fall. So as long as we can get the hoop out of the way quick enough, that penny should fall straight into this. Now the problem is doing that. Because if we try to move one way or the other, that may or may not work. But what can work is that realizing this hoop also has mass. So if I hit on the inside here, this part will move because it has a force on it. This part won't move for just an instant. And when that happens, the hoop will flatten. The penny will start falling because now there's no other force supporting that penny. It'll start falling. As long as I can get the hoop out quick enough, the penny should fall straight into the flask. Okay. Here we go. Now for a close-up. Alright, now let's try another one. This time, I've got one Coke bottle, and I'm going to place a dollar bill and the other Coke bottle on top of it. And the objective is to remove this dollar bill so that that Coke bottle stays on top of that Coke bottle. And these are glass Coke bottles. They're not plastic. So how would you get the dollar bill out from underneath there to keep that Coke bottle on top of that one without touching either of the Coke bottles? Give it a think, and then we'll give it a try and see what we can get to work. Okay. Now the one I'm best at is this one. Hold the dollar bill and chop down with your other finger. Like so. And the Coke bottle stays up there. Because we don't give it time for that force to create too much of a movement so this doesn't become unstable and fall over. The other way you can do it, which I'm not as good at, but I'll give it a go, is to actually crinkle up the dollar bill so you can get a running start. People sometimes can just pull, and some are successful at it. I'm not. So crinkle it up and then kind of jerk down and use that edge to help pull the dollar bill through. And it stays there. Okay? Could we do this with plastic bottles? Well, empty plastic bottles. Probably not. They don't have the mass and therefore they don't have the inertia to stay in place. They're way too easy to move. All right. Now, let's try this one. The idea is to get this block of wood down to this green area using just this hammer. So we could do that, and it will work. It will kind of push it down, but the problem is it's not very effective. So what can we do? Well, where's most of the mass of this? It's in the wood block. The handle has a lot less mass than the wood block does. So if we keep it setting still, the block will want to set still, but the handle will move a lot easier. So what if we do this? Hit it here. Watch what happens to the block. The block pretty much stayed in one spot and the handle got pushed through. So you'll see a lot of people that work with hammers a lot, sledgehammers, axes, 
uh, especially one with wooden handles, a lot of times they'll tap them against the ground a few times before they use them. They may not be able to recite Newton's first law, but they know how it works. Everything's moving, it wants to keep moving. Most of the mass is in the head of the hammer. When the handle hits and stops, the head keeps moving just a little bit and shoves itself onto the handle to secure that head to the handle. Let's try another one here. I've got a playing card, or not really a playing card, but one of the cards out of a playing deck and a quarter. Now I'll balance the quarter on the end of my finger. And the objective is to remove the dollar, or sorry, to remove the playing card so the quarter stays on top of my finger. And some people are able to just jerk this right up. I'm not that quick. But what I can do is this. If I thump it right on the edge, I can send the car spinning out and the quarter has mass, so it has inertia. It wants to keep setting still. So as long as there's not much friction there, it should stay on my finger. Like so. There's a quarter on top of the playing card. There's it right there. We want to thump that way. And it leaves the quarter on your finger. Okay. Hit it sideways like this. And the last one. The last one is one everybody loves. Here's the last one. The very famous tablecloth and dishes. So these are actual dishes. Here. This tablecloth, when a magician does this, he has a tablecloth, maybe silk, rayon, something that's very, very slick, very little friction. This is what I got from like a big box store. Nothing special about it except this side over here, I cut the, the seam off where they folded over. I cut that off so there's no seam going underneath the plates. So, I smooth that out. Here's the plates. Now this is how you do this one. The plates have mass. That's why you have to use real plates and not paper plates. Tablecloth, nothing special about it. When you see a magician do it, they, a lot of times they have food on the plates, water in the glasses. Does that make it easier or harder? Well, it actually makes it a lot easier because they add even more mass to the plates. And so they're even harder to move because they have more resistance to motion. And so it makes it a lot easier because they have more inertia. So roll the tablecloth up, knuckles on top, keep the knuckles below the table. Put one foot in front of the other, doesn't matter which one, just don't put them side by side because then when you jerk straight down, your head comes down. Put one foot in front of the other, and you want to jerk straight down as hard as you possibly can, but here's another trick. Don't watch. Close your eyes, put your head down, because what happens is when you pull, the plates could move just a little bit, and it's your body's natural reaction to slow down, which is exactly wrong because then the tablecloth can then put a little bit more force on these plates and cause them to move and they end up on the floor. So close your eyes, put your head down. Good time to pray. And you want to jerk straight down as hard as you possibly can. Ready? One, two, three. And there they are. So inertia is an object's resistance to change in motion. The more mass it has, the more inertia it has. The more likely it wants to sit still. If it's sitting still, or if it's moving in a straight line of constant velocity, then the more likely it's going to do that until an outside force acts upon it. So Newton's first law is when all the forces are balanced. It's only got two options, either to set still or move in a constant velocity. When the forces become unbalanced, that's when Newton's second law kicks in, and that's for a later video. Thank you, and have some fun with physics. Bye.